we just didn't kill ourselves. You know, there was, there's no word that talks about suicide in the, the Yulungur la language amongst any of the dialects across the country when it comes to different, you know, languages. And we're very descriptive people as Aboriginal people. So much of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's mental health, their social emotional well-being is um, related to their culture, related to their connection to country and related to their relationships um, with, with family. And those sorts of connections are absolutely critical for building into people strong sense of self and purpose so that they understand that they're a part of something that is bigger, um, that is more than that individual life and that we are a part of a, you know, a wider social fabric that expands and extends over tens of thousands of, of years and, and will do in, into the future, it will in, endure. One of the problems that we have with our approach to mental health is the way that we draw this dichotomy between mental health and the rest of health that, that there's, there's an extraordinary continuum between, between the two. And the more that we learn about psychiatry and mental health, the more that we see that there's a whole bunch of, of physiological factors which play directly um, into, into poor outcomes in, in, in mental health. Um, uh, uh, Professor Ernest Hunt is doing a lot of work at, at present on, on it, allosteric load, so the, the, this, these high levels of stress hormones floating around um, in young people, particularly young um, uh, Indigenous people, and how this plays out and increases the odds that this person will end up um, with, a, with a major depressive disorder or a, um, um, or a schizophrenic disorder. There's a lot more to the backstory than just what you see when the patient rocks up. You might see an angry person or a psychosing person or someone in depression or bipolar, whichever condition or situation they, they present in. Um, but what actually led them there uh, it stretches sort of basically back to colonisation. It is intergenerational, um, it is ongoing oppression, removing them from their status, making them insignificant um, and just working them as slaves and not recognising their part in, in, in our culture and, and where they function. So if you take someone's uh, reason for being away, then what are you left with? You're left with someone who feels worthless, someone who's depressed goes to the bottle, goes to the drugs, becomes an angry person, um, which leads on generation on generations. Being able to look after Aboriginal people when they're mentally ill means that you need to be able to understand the culture that they come from. And that means having done enough study to understand that Aboriginal people all over the continent are from different countries, different languages, different cultures, and that you can't generalise about us. It's also true that mind, body and spirit speak as one in a healthy person, particularly in an Indigenous healthy person. At times it's like, get me back to country. You know, I've got to get back to country, got to put my feet in that red dirt, got to sit down, got to talk to the, to the spirits. You know, someone's sitting there and they're talking to themselves and a white fellow might say, oh, they're bloody crazy, who are they talking to? We're talking to our ancestors, we're talking to our spirits. That's who we're talking to. You don't go into a church and someone's kneeling down and you look at someone praying to a God because it's in an institution, they say, this person needs to be medicated. Our church is the land, it's Mother Earth, it's going back to country, you know, that, that's, that's our place. Quite often people are scared of the unknown because they don't know. But when we go out to country, I tell my kids, you know, my daughter who went to the Blue Mountains not long ago for a school camp, Destiny, you go there, you yell out to them spirits, you tell them where you're from, to where your country is, and you make sure and ask them to take care of you. And um, I said that to my son, he went camping with, with his mates and said, son, you yell out to them spirits there and you ask them to look after you. So we're not crazy. There's just a sixth sense of, you know, that spiritual well-being. And we know ancestors walked this country for 40,000 years and we know their bones are in the caves or their, their, their spirits lives on. 
they got me um, uh, working with a, a senior psych registrar in a private hospital, uh, in a recently opened private psychiatric unit. And, um, uh, and he seemed like a pretty clever fellow. Um, uh, and we got to talking about a few things. Now, at that particular year, there was a, there was a, a young lady, an Aboriginal lass, who'd, who'd been in medical school, who, who had been sectioned, uh, had been, you know, found to be acutely psychotic, was sectioned, and, and she never returned. She, you know, disappeared on us and never returned. And, um, and we were talking about the circumstances behind that. And um, I said, oh, so what, what was the issue? Oh, she, was a, a, she had a, um, a, a florid, florid delusions. Oh, so what were the delusions? Oh, this nonsense that somebody had pointed a bone at her grandfather because she hadn't had appropriate permission from elders before she left home. Sorry, what? Oh, yeah, pointing the bone, nobody believes in that. Are you kidding me? Of course people believe in that. No, no, nobody believes in that anymore. Yes, they do. No, no, it was a delusion. So I, I had, um, uh, you know, a tomb psychiatry for the house officer in my lab pocket and I pulled out and I opened it up to the patient and said, see here, delusion, fix false belief, not in keeping with the culture in which you were raised. This was entirely in keeping with the culture which she was raised, not with it you were raised, in which she was raised. He was a good man, he wasn't a bad man, he was a nice man. I know that he had concern for his patient, but he just had absolutely no idea that his fixed view of the world wasn't everybody else's fixed view of the world. Um, and so, you know, when, you, when you're having a think about those things, then just, you just need to keep in mind that how I view the world may be different to how the person across the table from me views the world. And if you can keep an open enough mind on that and just explore a few things before you go labouring it, then your chance of coming up with the right answer goes up by a factor of 100. People have spirituality. so. In that context, people may be talking about something about, wow, that's weird, what are they talking about? But when you dig deep under the surface, there's a lot of deep spirituality involved. So people may be talking to themselves in a corner, but you think, have they got dementia? No. It's because some of them reflect on their own lives. They talk to themselves to reassure themselves with self-confidence. For non-Indigenous people, understanding the way in which spirituality and culture affects um, well-being and, and the mind, it, it can be a bit of a a struggle because those sorts of concepts aren't necessarily explained in psychiatry and, and psychology. It's not just about a sense of me, it's about a sense of me in the context of the we, of the, of the whole, and appreciating that we are who we are because of where we've come from and what we do in this life is important for what, what comes next and those connections to country and those connections to people and those connections over time um, are not, they need to be rebuilt or, or nurtured in a way that isn't necessarily done by medications or you know um, I guess traditional psycho, psychotherapy and those sorts of things. It's not that they're not useful, it's just that to properly deal with the issues of social emotional well-being there needs to be once again a, a, a more comprehensive overview and a more comprehensive approach to, to dealing with these issues. If you've got a strong sense of your own identity and spirituality um, I think a lot of people are well within themselves.